Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him. We see also we praise and glorify Him. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all of His noble messengers, in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we greet you with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa This is the Masjid Middle Way in Rotterdam, and we are now approaching the end of the month of Shawwal in the year 1444. And uh, today we have the last of a series of six lectures on the subject of the Qur'an, falling in love with the Qur'an. And we have already covered the status of the Qur'an and the role that the, role the Qur'an must play in our lives. We have spoken about the methodology for reciting the Qur'an and now the methodology for study of the Qur'an. And today we are applying for the last time, applying that methodology to a supremely important subject, the subject of Gog and Magog. I have uh, two books on the subject, but they were written many years ago. One is um, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. That must be somewhere around 2006. And the other book is the Tafsir, the commentary of uh, Surah al -Kaf. And <coughs> the beginning of this uh, subject of Bhagavad Magog is important that the Quraysh could not, no, they did not know how to deal with a man who was born in their midst and who was so honest and truthful trustworthy that they gave him the name al Amin, al Amin, and yet the same man is now declaring that it is false to worship all these idols and you must worship only one God. And then he says that about himself that I am a prophet of the one God, like unto Moses, Nabi Musa, Islam, and Abraham, Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam. So they were puzzled and they were confused and they sent a delegation to the northern city, thank you, of uh, Yathrib, which was then subsequently named Medina, to ask the rabbis, how can we tell whether he is indeed what he says he is, a prophet of the one God? And the rabbis responded, and we make sure that the world never forgets what the rabbi said. Ask him these three questions which only a true prophet can answer. And one of the questions was, ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the answer to this question in this surah? In surah al -Kaf. Surah al -Kaf. And <coughs> when he began the answer, he identified the traveler, the great traveler, as Zul Karnay, someone who possesses two to karm. And the word karm in Arabic can mean a horn or it can mean a generation, a people. So which one is it? Let the Quran answer that question. The Quran has never used the word karm to mean a horn. Never. The Qur'an has always used the word karm to mean a people, a generation. <coughs> and so, 
Zulkarne will be an event which occurs twice in history, impacting on two different peoples in two different ages. That's the first most important statement to be made on this subject. The first of the two cards is described in the Quran. The second is not. And we have to be able through insight to recognize when the second karn of karnain is to occur. The Quran begins by declaring about Zulkarnain that he is someone who possesses fate. And that Allah blessed him or endowed him with power and established him in the land and gave him the means to achieve whatever end he chose to pursue. And so He decided to travel westwards to the setting of the sun. He goes on an expedition in the westward direction. Oh, it's gone. Oh, my. So he now pursues a journey in the westward direction. Hatta Iza Balaga Magribasham, she now reaches where the sun is setting and it is setting he discovers the sun setting in a body of water which is dark and murky meaning that visibility is very shallow in the Mediterranean Sea, you could see a few meters below. But in this one, the Black Sea, that's why it's known as the Black Sea. Visibility is very shallow. You can only see about one meter. How do we know that he reached to the Black Sea? It's not only because it is dark and murky, it is the sea would qualify. The second is a second reason, and that is we turn to a hadith of our Prophet when he spoke about Gog and Magog. That when they are released, he said, The first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee in Arabic, Bukhayrat al Tabariya, but in the Jews call it the Kinneret, Lake Kinneret. And in English, the Sea of Galilee. They will pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water, meaning start to consume the water. Consumption of water can be for agricultural purposes, could be for industrial purposes as well. 
and by the time <laughs> the last of them pass, no more to come, no more to come, they will say there used to be water here. So they say your Galilee is going to run dry. Every Jew knows that. But they are passing the Sea of Galilee on their way to Jerusalem. So if you are passing the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem, you are coming from the north. Does anyone differ? Good. If you are coming from the north of the Holy Land, then which bodies of water are located to the west? There are only two. The Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. There's no third. The Mediterranean Sea has good visibility. You can see several meters down. The Black Sea does not have that. It qualifies as dark and murky. So from two perspectives we are able to recognize the Ainun Hamia of Surat al as the Black Sea. Does anyone differ? Good. When we reach to <coughs> when we reach to the Black Sea, he came across a people. And then Allah spoke to him. I am not aware that Allah ever spoke to Alexander, the Greek. If you know it, let me know. <laughs> I am not aware that Allah ever spoke to Cyrus, the, the Persian emperor. If you have the evidence, let me know. <laughs> so Allah spoke to him and said to him, <coughs> You can either use your power to punish these people or you can use your power to treat them nicely. What is the response of the Qur'an? Meaning, listen carefully, when power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? This is important because later on we're going to find power resting on foundations which are godless. And we see that power is used in a different way. So when power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? How will power be used when power rests on the foundations of faith? And Zulkarnain replied, <coughs> He said, Whosoever is wicked, I'm going to punish them. Oh yes. I will use my power to punish the wicked. The people who were unjust, the people who were oppressed. I will use my power to punish them. And when they return to you, you will also punish them. Good. Oh no, this one. Good. But those who have faith and who is conducted righteous, see the two things he's looking for? Number one, faith, meaning faith in one God and righteous conduct. Once you are doing that, that's all I need. And I will reward you 
and I'll treat you nicely. I'll be kind in my treatment to you. Then he turned <coughs> to another expedition and this time he is traveling in the direction of Madhra'ishans, the rising of the sun. For you and I, the sun rises always from the east. But we have some people today who tell me that the sun is going to rise from the west one day. Yeah. Because our prophet prophesied a sunrise in the west. And I say to them, you're wrong. This is not Mukkama, this is Mutashabiya. The western sunrise is not to be understood literally because La Tabdila Likhalkillah. Quran declared that the sun rises from the east, so it's not going to rise from the center from the West ever. We now come to a difficult passage in the Quran. Surah Al-Kaf has given me many challenges. And I share with you today, there were one or two passages in Surah Al-Kaf, in this story, that for the last 20 years I could not understand. And this morning, when I'm preparing for this class, Allah gave me the understanding. So the river of knowledge runs at its own speed. You've got to be patient and wait. And when Allah chooses to give you knowledge, the time for Allah for it. And I'm going to share with you later. So he goes in the direction of the rising of the sun. And then he found it only a few words that's all and we have to try to penetrate it with only these few words who, who are these people this was the black sea so that will be the caspian sea and it's the people living in the region of the caspian sea and allah says <coughs> so perhaps and Allah knows best, a people who are not given any protection from the elements, from the sunshine and so on. So living a primitive way of life. That's one possible. And we say, when you make a ta'wil or an interpretation, you say Allah knows best. But the other possibility is that these are people who because they have not been endowed with any covering Minduniha Sitra other than what was given by nature by Allah they are therefore a vulnerable people what's the Dutch word for vulnerable? Kretsbar. you speak Dutch? Yeah. <laughs> Kretsbar. Kretsbar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a vulnerable people. And so you see these people, because they are vulnerable, they are being attacked and they are being oppressed. And they are suffering and suffering and suffering all through history. sitra. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, 
strangely for Zulkarne, strangely, instead of doing something to protect them, instead of doing something to help them, Kedarika, with one single word, Nowhere in the Quran do you find this kind of extremely concise language that Allah gives a statement with only one word. Kedalika. وَقَدْ أَحَطْنَا بِمَا لَنَيْهِ And thus we made he made them. Zulkarnain arrived and he found them in this way and he left them as they were. He responded to them in this way by leaving them as they were. Allah says, I understood why he did that. And as a consequence, these people will remain in this state. If we choose the second meaning, not the one that they are primitive, a primitive people around the, the <coughs> region of the Caspian Sea, we no longer find primitive people everywhere. So if we take a second meaning, a people who are vulnerable, who are those living in the region of the Caspian Sea, who have been suffering and suffering and suffering all through history, Anybody can help me? Armenia. Huh? I didn't hear you. Armenia. The Armenian people. They are still suffering to this day because Azerbaijan is preparing to crucify them. <laughs> the Armenian Christian people. Good. So he left them as they were. And then he traveled in a third direction, but the rabbis never ask about that. The rabbis ask only about two directions, the two ends of the world. But, uh, but Allah knew they were talking about, they wanted to know about the third one, so he gave them the answer. What is the third answer, the third one? Hatta is a bella between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, there is a continuous range of mountains. What are they called? Caucasus. The Caucasus Mountains. And in the Caucasus Mountains, there is only one break. One break in that mountain path, one pass. <coughs> And that pass has mountains on this side and mountains on that side. But the two sides of the mountains are like this. Sadapain. Baina Saddain. He he reached to he sorry, I'm, I'm going so fast. He reached to the pass between the mountains. Um, and there he found the people whose language was strange, it could not be understood. In other words, <coughs> they spoke a language which was not connected with any of the regional languages. They spoke a unique language. What could that be? Georgian is correct. The Georgian language is unique. It is not connected to the regional languages. So the Georgian language by the Caucasus Mountains confirmed. So when Zulkarnain was able to communicate with them, They then spoke to him and they said to him the God and the God, oh, that is what the rabbis want to know about. <laughs> they wanted to know whether Nabi Muhammad 
Some knew about Gaganatha. That is the question. So these people now say that Gag and Magad are committing fasad, you know, and what is fasad? Fasad is not just that which corrupts. Fasad is that which corrupts to the extent that it can destroy. I have to cut from this lecture because of the time frame, okay? Another day when I have enough time, I can expand, inshallah. <coughs> and they said, go to Zulkarnay, listen, we prepared to pay. Can you do something? Can you build a barrier that will protect us from them? And uh, they use the word sad, a barrier. So Zulkarnain should have replied, if these people are committing facade, then they are wicked. And if they are wicked, I don't need to build any barrier, I just move in and beat the daylights out of them, and they'll never trouble you again. That's what he should have said. But he didn't do that. He agreed to build the barrier, indicating that Gog and Magog were too powerful, that even Zulkarnay did not have the power to be able to defeat them. If Zulkarnay did not have the power to defeat them, and he had to build a barrier to contain them, then if that barrier is never destroyed and they are released into the world, there will be no power on the face of the earth, no combination of powers who could stand up to them. Okay. So he agreed to build not a sun, he agreed to build a radam, and the English translation of radam would be a rampant, rampant. That is, you have a you have a walled city, and you have a high wall, and you have a place where you can fire your, your vector, a rampant. So he then asked them to bring me blocks of iron. Zubar al Hadid. So that has to be a geographical location where there is an abundance of iron ore. And that is precisely what you can find at this pass called the Dariel Gorge. An abundance of iron ore. He says, Help me. Help me with your manpower. Bring me. Where does it? Where does it say I'm right now? I'm missing something. <laughs> yes, there we are. I miss his verse. <laughs> he says, "What my Lord God has given me is adequate for me. I don't need your money, but I need your help with your manpower." Aruni, Arinu, Arinuni Bikuwa, Arinuni Bikuwa, help me with your manpower. Aja'al baynakum wa baynahum radna, and I will establish this rampant between you and them. And then he says, Atuni Zibar Zubur al Hadid, bring me blocks of iron. And when he had placed the iron or between the sadapain, sadapain, meaning that this side of the mountain and that side of the mountain were shaped like this, shape of a shell. Up to this day, it is still there, you can see it, up to this day. 
And then he says, build a furnace, blow it to metals. And some of the commentators say it was copper, and some say it was lead. He says, blow it to metals, and then he poured the molten copper on the barrier of iron, so that it would not rust. It would not rust. As a consequence of building this barrier, God and Magad could not scale and could not penetrate the barrier. And then Zulkarnain spoke. I don't think Alexander could have stick to spoken these words or Cyrus. This bar barrier has been constructed because of Allah's kindness. Because of Allah's kindness. For <laughs> and when that time comes of which my Rabb has warned, Wadi has warning, not just from his warning. And when that time comes of which my Lord has warned, my Rabb has warned, Allah is going to dismantle this wall, this rudder, and reduce it to dust. And that time, the warning of my Rabb will be fulfilled. What's going to happen? What kind of warning is it? This is the verse I could not understand <laughs> for 20 years. <laughs> for 20 years I couldn't understand it. وَتَرَكْنَ بَعْدَهُمْ مِوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ This is not easy. I thought. وَتَرَكْنَ بَعْدَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ And when God and God are released into the world, I understood this to mean that they will crash against each other, like waves crashing against each other. And this morning I realized, no, when Gog and Magog are reached, we will learn later that they will be spreading out all over the world. We are coming to that soon. But when they are released, they will be spreading all over the world and they will be inflicting on mankind a reign of terror and of corruption, destruction, fasan. And they will come against mankind like one wave after the other. وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْدَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْدٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْدٍ So I now believe this is the correct meaning. That there will be wave after wave after wave after wave of Gog and Magog. When you thought it's finished, it's sick of him. And then something is going to happen in the world. This is the warning that Allah has given. I will cause all of mankind to be brought together as one community. I prefer to call it one global society. One global society. And then globalization. Okay. Now listen. What 
وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا. When you see that global society coming into being, then that is a time when Allah's punishment is going to come upon mankind. For those who are kafirin, for those who rejected the truth, that Jahannam is now before you in your very eyes, meaning that life is going to be so terrible at that time that it is the equivalent of the life of Jahannam, which is very in your very eyes, Allah's punishment is now coming upon mankind. Endless slaughter, endless killing. I see her falling on your rooftops like rain, he said. So they asked, what is harj? And he said, killing and slaughter. He says, the one who kills would not know why he's killing. And the one who is killed would not know why is killed. So random killing, senseless killing, all over proliferate. This is what's happening in my country now, Trinidad. Okay? And this is Jahannam before your eyes, plain as daylight. And the reason why you have the, you inflicted now with Jahannam before your very eyes, they were a people who were negligent. Negligent of Allah, negligent of the truth which came from Allah. They had eyes and they couldn't see. They were blind. <laughs> and now you pay, you pay the price for that. And they would not listen. They're incapable of listening. It goes from this air, it comes out in that air. And so now take the punishment. Good. If this is the first come, what's going to happen when the second come comes? Remember we said her name. <coughs> Answer, the second curve will come when Allah once again establishes power in the land and power which is resting on the foundations of faith. And that power must emerge in the region of the Black Sea. And when you see power emerging in the region of the Black Sea, and that power is resting on the foundations of faith, and that power is resisting the wicked people, resisting the oppressor, resisting those who are unjust, resisting their unjust monetary system, resisting their unjust military affairs, <coughs> That power, when you see it, my position is that this is the second curtain of Karne. We never saw that in the region of the Black Sea, not during the time of the Ottoman Empire, because the Ottoman Empire was itself an oppressor. 600 years! of endless oppression of the Orthodox Christian people to the extent that they hated Islam, they despised Islam. And when they got the freedom to do it, they destroyed every single mosque they could destroy. That's what the Ottoman Empire did. In other words, the Ottoman Empire was sabotaging the end time in Akhil was a man, friendship and alliance between the Ummah of Muhammad Islam, and the Ummah of Nabi Isa Jesus. 
I wish I could speak at length on this subject, but we don't have the time tonight. That power has now emerged in the region of the Black Sea. It was the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had no faith, it was darkness. So when Russia emerged from the Soviet Union, and Russia started returning to her Orthodox Christian heart, a man marrying another man and getting a marriage certificate, not in Russia, no sir. And your bogus monetary system, paper money, and Russia is now supporting China and they're challenging it. And Russia is now the most powerful military force in the world. I don't have the time to give you the evidence, but we have the evidence. So now we say, this is the second garden of Karnay. And therefore, we can anticipate that, <coughs> that Russia is going to checkmate NATO. The first time it was a barrier built with iron and steel. Iron, sorry. It was a, a, a rampart. What will it be in the second time? Mirad already gave me the answer, it's hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic missiles. And uh, we are watching now before our very eyes. It's unfolding now for those who are eyes and can see that the second current of Carnage is taking place and it will conclude with NATO being checkmated in the north. So no more Gog and Magog will go down south. The last of them will have already gone. But once they left the north and they gone down south, Gog and Magog remained in Jerusalem. They're still there. And when Nabi Isa Islam returns, they will attack him. And he will then pray to Allah. And Allah will destroy them with biological warfare something that attacks them at the top of the spine and they all fall down paralyzed and the next morning they're all dead. Now then, we proceed now to the only the second part of the Quran. Only two places in the Quran is Allah mentioned Gav and Bakar. This is Surah al -Kaf, and now we go to Surah al -Anbiya. and Allah said <coughs> وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى خَرِيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ Allah destroyed a town. He expelled the people of the town. He placed a ban on them that they could never return. Annahum liar they cannot return to reclaim that town as their own. Hatta until is a futihat. Futihat meaning release. Futihat. Release, Ba'atha means to send. And here it is Futihat. In the Hadith it is Ba'atha, to send. Here it is Futihat. Remember him? Remember what I'm saying here? Hatta is a Futihat. Yeah, God and Magog, when they are released, from behind the barrier, meaning Allah brings it down, demolishes it. God and Bagal will then, because of their indestructible power, they will spread out all over the world. Min kulli hadabin And when they spread out all over the world, then with their indestructible power, the hadith in Sahih Muslim is the hadith al-Qudsi. 
Allah says, I have created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them. So there will be no power or no combination of powers in the world who stand up to them. So you should not, you don't need a PhD to come to the conclusion that they will take control of power in the world. I should not have to take you now through history for you to recognize. Because, now listen carefully, because I have an audience there who thinks, but there are endless people out there who don't think, have no capacity to think, or refuse to think, and when this recorded lecture is on the YouTube, you see how they respond. But Allah says, I send the, this Quran, they call me at the factory to people who think. And I'm saying to you now that when God and Magad are released, and they spread out in all directions, and they take control of power in the world, they will bring these people back to that town which Allah destroyed. Which town is it that is so linked with Gog and Magog? Answer, it is in Jerusalem that Allah will destroy them. I, do I need to go further than that? Do I need to offer you more evidence? Nabi Isa Islam will pray to Allah and Allah will destroy them in Jerusalem. And there are people living in Jerusalem and they don't understand this. They're living in Jerusalem and they don't understand this. So now then, which town is it? It cannot be other than Jerusalem. It cannot be other than Jerusalem. If you don't recognize the town as Jerusalem, you've got peanuts in your head. My language is harsh. What can I do? So now then, this is an event which will occur only once in history. That an all-powerful people will appear on the stage of the world. And they will have power which will rest on foundations which are godless and they will use power to oppress and to corrupt and these people are going to spread out all over the world and take control of power in the world and when they do that they will bring the Jews back to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own. Do you need a PhD to recognize who is governing on earth? And who brought the Jews back to Jerusalem? Who is it who appeared on the stage of the world with power that nobody could stand up to? Who is it who had a power which was resting on foundation which was godless and who used power to oppress and to corrupt? Who it is who brought the Jews back to Jerusalem? Answer, there's only one answer, they will never accept it. I don't know what to do. My heart is weeping. The grave is close now for me. And I've been teaching this subject for years and years and years and they wouldn't listen to me. That is the pathetic world of Islamic scholarship. It is modern Western civilization. It is modern Western civilization. And so Gog and Magog are those who control power in the modern Western world. Full stop. <laughs>